Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. I have a really quick one today. I'm gonna to be doing a couple of quick videos uh, in the next week. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna be getting back to um, talking about gay culture and uh, all of the myriad of problems, pitfalls and snares within it. Today, I'm going to save you a lot of time, money, and energy. I think a lot of people like to complicate things in the world. Although life is complex, some things are really, really simple. And I often have trouble with people that make simple things really, really complex. For example, going to a restaurant and them not being able to order or them being confused about what they want or maybe changing something on the menu or not being able to understand very, very straightforward and simple things. I often feel a lot of people really do, in fact, understand what's going on, but they tend to complicate things <clears throat> because it gives them a sense of purpose. It makes them regain control over a situation or really they're doing really fuck all uh, in their job. You know, if I was able to sit them down and say, what exactly have you been doing for the past four or five days at your desk and actually was able to look at the productivity and the actual work that's going on here, you would find a whole bunch of fluff, a whole bunch of excuses, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of nothing, making simple things and basic things into complex things so they can get off the hook um, to make it look like they're doing a lot when in fact a lot of people really just position themselves in roles where they do really not a great deal. So the topic at hand today is in a relationship, in psychology, in life, you can go to therapy, you can go to pay someone money by the way, I believe um, the medical practices of the world, I believe the psychiatric care of the world is always going to be in the favor of, well, see you next week. That's $300, see you next week or something like that. Or we're going to pay to unpack your emotions and all this type of thing. And while therapy is, is good, a lot of it is terribly flawed. A lot of it is terribly outdated. And what you really need is someone that is able to see you on a soul level. And in psychology, they don't really treat the soul. They're just treating the chemicals in the brain. They're looking at the brain, all right? Very different. Very, two things very, very different. In a relationship, fundamentally, what it all comes down to, when you boil it down to its most simplest fucking form, is how do they make you feel how do you make them feel that is why they're still in a relationship with you that is why they're still your friend if they are not in a relationship with you if they've pulled away from you or if you've pulled away from someone else it all comes down to how you make each other feel all right, it is as simple as that. And a lot of this talking around in circles and gobbledy gobbledygook, word salad, blah, 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 blah. It all comes down to how you make the other person feel. When they walk through the door, when they come home from work, how do you make them feel? That's why they're there. When someone doesn't make you feel a certain way, the interesting thing about a human being is that we can only add to our experiences. So I'm getting a little bit esoteric here, all right? A little bit meta. We can't subtract an emotion. We cannot subtract an event. We cannot subtract that of what we are. We simply are what we are. And humans are creatures based on needs. We need or desire something, okay? It is said that necessity is the birthplace of invention. 
when we feel like we need something, we're going to create a way to get the need met. So what I'm saying straightforwardly is you cannot not meet a need. To not act on a need will create a problem. And the problem will generally be someone going off and creating that need outside of the relationship or meeting that need somewhere else until that connection becomes strong enough that it overrides the relationship that you had before or they lose interest in the relationship that they're in. That's why it's so critical when you're in a partnership to see someone, hear someone, understand someone because if you can't do those three things the relationship is really set on a time limit where it will eventually collapse and dissolve and erode all right so when it comes down to relationships are you seeing someone are you hearing them are you able to comprehend them Now, people can only meet someone else as deeply as they have met themselves. So it's true. If you have very poor psychological understandings of yourself, you're not going to be able to have the space or capacity to understand someone else on a deeper level than you. You can't love someone else outside of yourself until you already have self-love. If you're in a place of self-hatred, then there's no place for love to give, which means you can imitate emotions to other people, but it's not real. And something that isn't real, we know it can't last. Okay? So if you're in a relationship with someone and they're distant and the relationship is still salvageable, still able you there's still something there that can help bring it back together again by the way all relationships will have ruptures like a a dinghy or a boat you know one of those blow up boats it's about the repairing of the relationship and the two parties being willing to do that if one is unworkable and won't even recognize that there is a puncture in the relationship or the boat then the other person will be trying to fix something the other won't change which means it's a zero sum game and a zero sum game means that no one can advance no one can win and the boat will eventually sink okay so we've got to acknowledge things and check in with each other all the time if you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't check in with you really ever and it's just like this rehearsed kind of thing where they're not really checking in with you you need to, you know that it's already over. You need to leave, yeah? And then what will happen is you'll create other paradigms which will enable you to forge connections with other people that will be stronger than the one that you've just moved away from, provided that they're able to receive you and you're committed and they're committed to actually doing the work to have a real active relationship. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's what it all comes down to, how you make them feel, how they make you feel. Are they putting in the effort? Are you putting in the effort with them? And then what's workable? And that's really it. You can go to tons of therapy. You can go and fuck around with all this shit, but it's not going to change the simple facts that that's what it comes down to. It really does. People have asked me to do videos on cheating, and I am happy to do that. Uh, I will be doing a video at some stage about cheating, why people cheat. But a lot of it is now is that society doesn't really value relationships like it used to. We're seeing a complete um, nuclear family disruption. And of course, dysfunction breeds dysfunction. And if dysfunction becomes the norm, well, then we're kind of, our days are numbered, aren't they really? And that's really where we're at. But that's another video for another time another podcast for another time. But yes, if the need isn't getting met, there are two ways that a human will go about getting a need met. One is direct. So they'll tell the other person or their partner what they need directly, verbally or with their body language. I need this. I need you to suck my dick. Okay, that's direct. 
And I like direct because direct shows the other person that you're not afraid of direct communication. You're not afraid of someone saying no when you are direct because at least you told the other person. Okay. Um, indirect is you're needing your dick sucked, but you're not telling anyone and you're not telling your partner and your partner doesn't know that you need your dick sucked and you want that experience or you want to do whatever it is, fill in the blanks, set thing. And then what happens is the person goes and creates a scenario where they basically cheat and they get the need met with someone else. So that other person makes them feel how you didn't make them feel. That's really what it is. So the more expanded the needs or the more expansion that one wants, the more needs they're going to need. That's why it's very, very crucial when you're starting a relationship that you have commonality and when you meet someone, you have the skill set to be able to ask questions about the other person, which can ascertain whether you guys are even compatible from day one. So asking questions of relativity, because in order for humans to have connections, we need a point of relativity. We need to be able to relate. We need relatability to do that. People say that the biggest breakdowns of relationships is communication that's actually not true. It's actually not being understood, not being comprehended is actually the breakdown of communication. You can communicate to someone, but if that person doesn't have the mental bandwidth and capability to understand the complexities of what you're saying in your needs, then your needs won't get met. Resent resentment builds up over periods of time and generally it becomes like a monster all these unsaid things come in the form of a monster and then the monster kind of eats the relationship up at the end and destroys the relationship which was the distance of space that became between the two parties that created it so this is straight talk straightforward no bullshit straight to the point stuff that's what it is also if you've been with someone for a long period of time You've, they'll know all of your idiosyncrasies. You'll know all of theirs. Maybe you're a nag. Maybe you're a bit of a, you know, when are you coming home? Where are you type of thing? The other person gets a bit sick of that. It feels very restrictive. It's restricting and impeding on them having experiences. And then someone, so their love bank for you is kind of a little bit lower. And then someone else or the opportunity or the look of someone else is new because it's exciting and it's fresh and their love bank for the other person is higher than, than it is with you. So the other the party will explore that, that option because that other person makes them feel how you didn't make them feel. <sighs> it's complex. <laughs> but I hope you get where I'm going with all of this. I'm just dropping in some key points. It would save you a lot of money and time. And who really has money for therapy anyway anymore? I mean, have you seen the cost of living? And also a lot of therapists don't even know what I'm talking about, which is terrifying. But I'm just condensing this to a really simple thing. When someone walks through the door, how you make them feel, that's why they're there. Period. Case closed. I hope you're having a really good week and this was helpful and insightful. It is the truth. And remember, nothing can hurt you if it's not true. Otherwise, just have a laugh and get on with your day. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Yeah. All right. Have a great week. I will see you in the next video. It's all about how you make the other person feel. That's why they continue the connection. So work harder to receive, listen and understand someone so that you can encompass them and make a safe place for them so they will come to you. People are never going to come to you or want to come to you if they feel that you don't understand them because you can't receive them and that's how you can't make them feel safe. And in order to bring safety into a connection, you have to be willing to do that for them as well. So if you're contributing nothing to them, well, I mean, you can't expect the other party to hang around. And I'm not talking about physical things. I'm talking about depth. And that require, depth requires vulnerability. Okay, Vulnerability in a connection is what strengthens the connection. It's not a one-way street. All right. I'll see you in the next podcast. Lots of love. Leave a comment below. Have a great day. Bye.